St. Mark. Hope that you had a great week. We are thankful to God for another expression of his mercy and grace for allowing us to be back together again. We received some good news this past week from Governor Abbott as it relates to uh, the bans that we have been living up under. Things are beginning to open up a little bit even though it's at a small percentage of 25% occupancy, but we thank God for the incremental progress that has been made. We are happy and excited about that because that means small businesses are able to open their doors again. They're able to start trying to generate revenue, which is a good thing for them. And then it also means people are able to go back to work where they can begin to have income to not only take care of themselves, but also their families. So we want to thank God for that. Um, the prayer of the righteous does avail it much. So keep praying. Keep praying not only for yourself. Keep praying for the church, but also keep praying for those who are in harm's way, those on the front line, those who constantly put themselves uh, in danger so that we might be safe and we might be healthy. Let's keep praying for those who are in the hot spots, like we suggested and said on last week. The nursing homes and assisted living facilities have become hot spots. And so we want to keep them in prayer as well and pray for the leadership that we would know how to do what we should do and stay sensitive, if you would, to the voice of God so that we can hear what it is he is saying we can make sure that we are doing what he wants us to do. And I know during this crisis that we're in, it's really hard not to become anxious. I mean, when you just look at the, the news, whether it's the local news or the national news, um, it, it, it causes a lot of anxiety when you hear what's going on. I think we're up to like three million cases globally as it relates to this um, virus that we are dealing with. And one third of those cases is coming right out of the United States. So I know it's tempting to become anxious, but like we suggested and said a few weeks ago, that worrying really does us no good. It, it has no value. It's not value added. It, it's not even healthy. It's not therapeutic, but it's detrimental. To our health. So we don't want to find ourselves becoming wary. And we suggested that wary can turn into fear, and then fear can turn into panic. And whenever panic sets in, you run the risk of overreacting. And you'll find yourselves becoming a prisoner of your own mind because you're afraid. You're afraid to go out. You're afraid to stay in. You're just afraid and fear takes over and it paralyzes you and you become a prisoner of your own mind. So let's not, let's not become anxious. Let's not weary. But let us just continue to pray and just trust God for the difference. Now this is first Sunday and we are going to be served from the Lord's table today. So we want to... Uh, for those who would like to play part in this communion, if you would get you some crackers or some bread handy along with some juice. So once we do get to the time of communion, you can participate in the communion service. There is a word that God has given me that I would like to share with you. If you have your Bibles, you will want to turn to the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 4, and I want to read from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41, and it reads like this, that day when evening came, he said, meaning Jesus, to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving a crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious quail came up 
and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Peace, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. And he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. In one of her songs, Etta James said, I don't know why there is no sun up in the sky. It keeps raining all of the time. Life is bad, gloom and misery is everywhere. Stormy weather, stormy weather. I wanna thank Heather James because she has helped me with a title for this message, Stormy Weather. What are some lessons that we can learn when faced with the storms of life. There are three here from the text that I would like to share with you. One of the lessons that we can learn is you can be close to Jesus and still encounter storms. In verse 36, we see that although Jesus was in the boat with his disciples, the storm still struck. You know, there are some people who think just because they know and just because they love the Lord, they are exempt from having storms in their life. You have preachers who preach this, and you have people who believe this. That just because they know and they love God, they are exempt from having storms in their life. But the Bible doesn't teach us that. The Bible helps us to see that no one is exempt from storms. Even Paul said that Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. But God highly exalted him and gave him the name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. What am I trying to say right here? If you want something, you're going to have to go through something. Because no cross, no crown, no pain, no gain, no story, there will be no glory. Just because you know and love the Lord does not mean you are exempt from having storms in your life. Yes, you can be close to Jesus and still encounter storms. Another lesson that we can learn here when we are faced with the storms of life is that Jesus permits storms to test our faith. Yes, Jesus permits storms to test our faith. When he said to the disciples, let's go over to the, the other side, he knew that a storm was waiting on them. But notice, the, the purpose of the storm was not to kill the disciples. That was not the purpose of the storm. The purpose of the storm was not to kill the disciples. That's why when the disciples cried out to him, teacher, don't you care that we are drowning? Jesus got up and he rebuked the storm by saying, peace be still. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad to know that when storms are allowed in our life, that Jesus can either calm the storm or he can calm us while in the storm. Simply by saying, peace, be still. 
whether it's a physical storm, whether it is a, an emotional storm, whether it is a mental storm, whether it is a financial storm, it is good to know that Jesus has the ability to speak to the storms in our life simply by saying, peace, be still. The purpose of the storm was not to kill the disciples. The purpose of the storm was to test their faith. That's why Jesus, after having rebuked the storm, he turned around and he rebuked them by saying, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? I wonder if that's what the Lord is asking of the church today. Even though it is storming right now in our life, is he asking us, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? See, it was in the previous chapters that Jesus had already taught his disciples about receiving the word of God. Where he had already taught his disciples about having faith. And as any good teacher would do after having taught a lesson, they issue a test. When storms are allowed in our lives, they are allowed in our lives to test us on what the Lord has already taught us. See, it's not good enough to just be hearers of the word. But the Bible tells us we must be doers also. It's okay that you can recite the main points of a message, even the title of the sermon. Yes, it's good that you can be able to recite the high points of a lesson, but that's not good enough. It is not good enough for us to hear the word, but we have to also be doers of the word also. Storms are permitted to test our faith. And church, since we're passing this way, I think it's worth noting that for believers, even death can be a test of our faith. And, and, and I say that because of what Jesus said to the church of Smyrna in Revelations chapter 2. He, he, he instructed the church of Smyrna not to fear what they were getting ready to suffer at the hands of the devil. And he says, don't fear what you're about to suffer at the hands of the devil because it's a test. He says, but be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. In other words, even if this testing of your faith results in your death, Jesus says, be faithful unto death. And I will give you the crown of life. One of the lessons we can learn when we find ourselves faced with the storms of life is that, yes, you can be close to Jesus and still encounter storms. Another lesson that we learn is there are times when Jesus permits storms to come into our life to test our faith. But last but not least, we see that another lesson we can learn is if Jesus is in your boat, you will make it through the storm. The disciples, they forgot what Jesus had already said to them. They forgot that Jesus had said to them, let us go over to the other side. When Jesus said that, their destination was already determined. Because there was not going to be any power, any force that was going to prevent them from making it to the other side. Why? Because Jesus said, let us go over to the other side. We have the assurance of knowing if Jesus is in our boat, whatever it is that the Lord is wanting to get us to, he's going to get us through. Now, it might be rough. It might get rocky. It might be turbulent. It might be hard. It might be difficult. The waves may come. The winds may blow. But if Jesus is in the boat, we have the assurance of knowing we're going to get to wherever the Lord wants us to. To go. In closing, 
The Titanic, or the sinking of the Titanic, was one of the greatest maritime disasters in history. Because it was supposed to have been an unsinkable ship. But that's all it did do was sink. Andrew Smith, a Presbyterian pastor, once said that there was only one vessel in all of history that was truly unsinkable. And it was the one that occupied the sleeping Savior. What am I trying to say? The hearts that are going to be able to weather the storms of life are the hearts that has Jesus inside. If Jesus is in your boat, you will make it through your storm. Perhaps there's somebody out in the listening audience who want to know Christ as their Savior and as their Lord. In the Gospel of John, chapter 1, we're told that Jesus came to his own, but his own received him not. But as many as receive him, to them he gives them the power to become sons and daughters of God to those who believe on his name. If you would just accept Christ as your Savior and as your Lord, you can be saved. And if you do that, we want you to reach out to us and connect with us on our website. And you can do that by going to stmarkdallas.org. That's S-T-M-A-R-K-D-A-L-L-A-S dot O-R-G. Connect with us. Give us a chance to connect with you. St. Mark, we want to remind you of your financial commitment to the kingdom of God by way of St. Mark. There are two ways that you can stay current on your giving. You can go to the website and give that way, or you can just drop it in the mail. Send it to 4536 Phillip, Dallas, Texas, 75223. I want to encourage you to stay current on your giving as we continue to do the Lord's work. Now we are up to the time of communion. You want to go now and Get your crackers or bread and your juice as Deacon Reeves comes now and he serves us from the Lord's table. And I'll come back and we'll have our closing. service this morning. I have a scripture for you coming from Galatians chapter 2. Two and twenty and twenty-one. And it reads, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. 21 reads, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, then Christ died for nothing. Amen. Now, if you will, if you will. The same night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it. 
And then he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. This is doing remembrance of me. Likewise, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he told the disciples, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. They sang a hymn. They all went out to the Mount of Olives. Amen. St. Mark, until next time, be safe, be blessed, and remember, keep Jesus in your boat.